In this video, I'm going to show you some easy steps that will get you some great results for taking long exposure photographs of the Milky Way. So the basic equipment used is a standard DSLR camera, a standard kit lens and just a regular tripod. As long as you're using a DSLR camera where you can manipulate the ISO and have a bulb setting so that you can have long exposures, that's fine. The standard tripod will be fine. You may need to adjust the head of the tripod to angle your camera upwards, but we'll explain that later. We're not going to use a shutter release cable because when I got my kit first many years ago, I didn't have a shutter release cable, but I still managed to take some long exposure photographs. And we're not going to um, use any tracking uh, of the stars. So we're kind of limited to the uh, length that the shot can be, but that's fine because this is just the initial steps you would be taking into astrophotography. Okay, so let's go through the settings. The three most important settings are going to be ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. So I'm going to do this uh, demonstration using an old 350D uh, Canon camera and these are super cheap to pick up now um, You'll probably get them for about 100 150 euros including the lens and the lens for this demo is going to be the 18 to 55 mil lens So the first thing to do is set your camera to manual Then you can adjust the ISO setting so the ISO is the sensitivity to light and generally what you want to do is have this set to the highest possible. On this old Canon 350, it's 1,600. The higher you go generally, the more noisy the image is going to be. It's going to be a bit more grainy. On the old cameras, this is more of a problem. On the newer cameras, you can actually go quite high and you don't tend to get as much noise. So set your ISO to as high as you possibly can and you can adjust this down depending on the results of your shots. So your next setting is going to be aperture. And what this refers to is how much light the iris or diaphragm of your camera is going to allow in to the uh, sensor. On cameras, they're indicated by an F ratio or an F stop. And the higher the F stop, so F22 would be quite closed on f2 or 3 it'll be quite wide so what you want to do is you want to have the aperture pretty much as wide as possible so i'm going to just change that here you can see on this one it says uh, f22 so i'm going to hit my aperture value and i'm going to bring that right down to as low as possible so on this camera setting with this lens combination i'm going to get it down as far as 3.5 there are certain drawbacks to having the aperture as wide open as possible. And you tend to get slightly blurry stars at the edge of the field of view, but for the most part, you can crop these out later. It's more important really to make sure that you're allowing as much light as possible to hit the sensor. Uh, and again, you can adjust this up or down depending on the results of your shots. The last setting you're going to need to enter into the camera is your shutter speed or how long you're going to keep the shutter open for as you're taking the photographs of the sky. For this you're going to need to make a quick calculation and we use what's known as the 500 rule. You can find online versions of these calculators to um, get the correct value. Uh, for this particular camera and lens combination, uh, the 500 rule for the Milky Way is approximately 17 seconds or so. The reason why you want to figure this out is because you need to know how long to keep the shutter open so that you don't pick up star trailing. So obviously as the Earth is turning and the stars appear to move across the sky, you're going to pick this movement up on your camera. And if you leave the lens open long enough, you're going to get long trails of stars. Now sometimes this is desirable, especially if you're shooting star trails. And these can be really, really impressive looking photographs, super easy to take 
I will explain how to do star trails in another video. But for your first attempt at doing uh, Milky Way photography, then let's try to keep the star trails for later. Before we jump into planning and setting up a shot, I want to quickly talk about focus. So if you've got a camera that's got live preview and you're able to see the results of your focusing in real time on the LCD screen, this is great because you'll be able to get proper focus before you begin. If your camera doesn't have live preview, you're going to need to turn autofocus off, zoom in on a bright star or a planet if it's available and get it in focus as best you can. Then take a test shot. Check the image and make sure that it's in focus. If it's not, just refocus and test again. Just be sure that you've completely got your focus nailed down before you begin. To get the best possible results, shoot as far away from light polluted cities and towns as possible. Even some rural areas that appear dark to your eye can in a long exposure show up some badly placed street lights or house lights. So double check the light pollution maps for your area and find a good dark sky spot. Not only will artificial lights overpower your shot, but so too will the moon. So make sure that you check your lunar calendar and always shoot around a new moon if possible. The best time to shoot the Milky Way in the Northern Hemisphere is between March and September. You want to make sure that the Milky Way is nice and high in the sky and nicely framed in your shot. The best way to do this is to use planetarium software. The software that I would recommend is Stellarium, which is free, and also a very good app is called Photopills, and this uses augmented reality where you can actually see in real time where the Milky Way is positioned on your horizon. Final two things to mention are using a ball head and the countdown timer. So a good ball head will allow you to angle your camera in the orientation you want to frame your shot. They're relatively inexpensive, but be very careful when buying one that it's going to be fit for the task of locking securely and holding your camera plus the weight of the lens without slipping. Lastly, taking your shot without an intervalometer or a shutter release cable. To do this, you can simply set your shooting mode to timer and set it for two seconds. If you set it for 10 seconds, that's probably better because it will ensure that all the vibrations have dampened down before the shutter opens. Once you've taken a few test images and you're happy that your setup is good, it's time to get to your dark sky site and give it a shot. Goes without saying that you'll need to be prepared for the cold, so extra layers for you and batteries for your camera is a must. Also maybe invest in a lens warmer that will keep the dew off of your lens while you're shooting during the night. Adjusting the light levels, colors, cropping and otherwise working on your images in the likes of Photoshop will definitely be something that you'll want to do. But I'll make a quick 10 minute video on the basics. So if you're interested, click the subscribe button and then tick the notifications bell so you don't miss it. One of my favorite things to do in astronomy is planning and heading out to remote dark sky locations to observe and image the night sky. I hope this video has helped you. I'll leave you with some images I've taken over the years. Keep looking up and clear skies.